The first question here says, state the de Broglie hypothesis. And the de Broglie hypothesis is that all particles exhibit a wave-like nature. Now the wavelength of those particles, the particle's wavelength, is given by Planck's constant divided by the particle's momentum, so lambda equals h over p. So you get one mark for the definition and one mark for the equation, so that's two marks. The second question, a tennis ball of this mass is thrown with a speed of 20 meters per second through a gap width of one meter. Discuss whether the tennis ball will exhibit noticeable wave-like properties in this situation. Well, it's being thrown through a gap, so the wave-like properties that we're looking for is diffraction. So the first thing that we can do is we can work out what the wavelength of that tennis ball would be. So lambda equals h over p, um, which uh, gives us 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by p, which is mass times velocity, so 0 0.06 times 20, and that gives us a wavelength of about 6 times 10 to the minus 34. Now that wavelength is way, way smaller than the gap of 1 metre, and so because it's so much smaller, remember diffraction only happens when the wavelength and the gap size are roughly similar, so this will exhibit no diffraction at all, and so no wave-like properties will be noticeable. That's one way of working out that question. The second way is using the uncertainty principle. So you can say that delta x times delta p is uh, greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. And your uncertainty and momentum you could take from being your actual momentum. So you've got 0 0.06 times 20. So the momentum there, or your delta p, what you're taking is your delta p gives you 1.2 kilogram meters per second. Um, putting that into this equation gives you an uncertainty in your position of about 6.33 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. Now that uncertainty in the position, again, is so small that no diffraction is going to be noticeable and we're not going to notice wave-like behavior. For part C, an electron is accelerated from rest through a potential difference v. Deduce that the de Broglie wavelength lambda of the accelerated electron is given by this. Well, first of all, we need to know that kinetic energy of the electron is given by the charge on the electron times the voltage. Now, that comes from v equals e over q. And in this case, the charge on the particle is the charge on the electron, little e, and so we've, and the energy we're giving it is kinetic, so we can change that to this formula here. So once we've done that, we can say that's also equal to half mv squared of the electron. And we can rearrange this formula to say 2mev equals m squared v squared, which is also equal to p squared, because mv is p, momentum, and so p, momentum, equals the square root of 2mev. Now we put that into our equation up here, and we get lambda equals h over root 2mev, and that's what we're trying to get there. The final part of this is just using this equation, calculating the de Broglie wavelength, so that gives us lambda equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 over the square root of 2 times the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, times the charge on the electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, times the voltage, which is 54 from the question, and that gives you a de Broglie wavelength of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Mm -hmm.